If you suffer from nasty nerve related issues like numbness or radiating pain in the arms or legs, or you have body tension or even low back or neck pain, then nerve mobility might be the key component in solving these issues. But how can you know if your nerve mobility is indeed restricted? In this video we will show you how you can test your own nerve mobility and we will also tell you how you can fix these nerve mobility issues. So watch the video all the way to the end to get some answers to the mysteries of life. Also remember to like our video and subscribe to the channel. Before we jump into the movement tests, I will briefly tell you what causes these... <laughs> Alright, before we jump into the movement tests, I will briefly tell you what can cause these nerve mobility issues. First reason is spine related. This means, for example, disc herniations, disc bulges or vertebral displacements or spinal stenosis. These can pinch the nerves and yikes. The second reason is muscle tightness and fascial tightness. This is a lesser yikes but yikes nonetheless. The nerves travel between these tissues and tightness can restrict the movement. Also there is this saying called use it or lose it in our bodies and this means that if you never go into mobility demanding positions, then your nerves lose the ability to do so. Next, let's go over the actual execution of the mobility tests. When testing nerve mobility, it's essential to understand that the nerve tissue is a continuum. It starts from the head, it goes down your spine and from there it branches out into the arms and legs. In the arms, for instance, this is the stretch position for one branch of the nervous system called the med median nerve. And if I move my head further away from the arm, then I'm stretching the nervous system even further. And the healthy nervous system should tolerate even this extreme position. Also, if I move my head towards the same side as this arm, I'm actually giving the nerve some slack and this will actually release the tension in the nerve. So the movement tests are performed using these principles. More on that soon. First we will do the upper body nerves and then the lower body ones. Before we begin, a word of caution. If you have any cut nerves, damaged nerves, don't do the tests. And also if you have any serious nerve pathologies, don't do the tests. Also, if you have acute disc herniations, then some of the spine movements can be really painful. So keep that in mind. First we will show you how the median nerve is tested. This nerve runs from the neck under the collarbone. From there it goes to the upper arm into the inner parts and from there it goes to the front of the forearm and into the first four fingers. <laughs> Next we will start the movement test and you can follow along. So raise the arm into 90 degrees of shoulder abduction and keep the palm pointing towards the ceiling. And then the shoulder goes into as much external rotation as you can. Next, pull your shoulder down and keep it there. After this, you straighten your hand as far as you can. And at this point, you might start to feel that you can't get it straight or you might feel other symptoms. Remember not to force the movement and keep your fingers pointing towards the floor. We continue the test so that you side bend your head away. At this stage you might start to feel even more tightness and this is typical sign of poor nerve mobility. Then we double check this phenomenon so you also side bend your head towards that hand. If this eases the tightness this is the final sign that the nerves are not able to move like they should and they cause you problems. Next, let's test out the other side. So raise your arm and keep the palm facing towards the ceiling. Externally rotate the shoulder, pull your shoulder down and then slowly extend the arm as far as you can. Remember to keep the fingers pointing down towards the floor. Next, you side bend away from the arm. If this worsens your symptoms, that's a bad thing and, 
And if you side bend your head towards the arm and this eases the feeling of tension, then this is also a sign of the nerve issue. The next nerve we are testing is called the radial nerve. Again, it runs from the head down the neck under the collarbone to the back side of the arm. Then it goes to the outside of the forearm and from there to the first three fingers. Next, we will do the test, so follow along again. First, make a fist with the thumb inside. Then, the hand is bent at the wrist and the hand is turned from the shoulder into internal rotation, so the palm faces the ceiling. Remember to keep this position of the arm the whole time and also pull down your shoulder. Then, raise the hand as far to the side as possible and if it, this clearly stays under a 45 degree angle at this point, then that's not good. Also, if you feel any numbness or there is any electrical sensation or pain, do not force the test further. All right, next we will perform the head movements. Again, first you will bend away. And again, if this increases any tension or pain or any other symptoms, then this is a clear sign that the nerve tissue cannot move normally. Next, let's double check by turning the head to the same side as the arm. And if this clearly eases the feelings of tightness, then again, this is a sign that the nerve tissue would require treatment. Next, let's repeat this test for the other side. So, make a fist with the thumb inside, then bring the arm down with the wrist bent, uh, internally rotate the arm, bring the shoulder down and let's lift the arm. If this is difficult and uh, the arm stays under 45 degrees, then you have some movement restrictions. Next, let's side bend the head away. If this increases the tension, that's a bad thing, not, not good. Also, Let's side bend to the same side. If this eases the tension, this is a clear sign of the nerve mobility issues. On to the next one. The third and last of these arm nerves is a rascal called ulnar nerve. And it goes like this again, starting from the head, through the neck and under the collarbone towards the arm. And from there it goes inside the arm into the vicinity of the elbow joint. There's a spot there that often gets bumped into something, the so-called funny bone. From there it continues along the inner edge to the last three fingers. So once again, follow along with the test. And first Marcus shows us uh, the OK sign and then he turns it properly towards the I like this. So can you get into this position? That's the primary interest here. And also you want to be on the lookout for any symptoms of hearing. Next, we will move the head away from the hand. And if this increases the tightness, you are quite sure that you have some problems with the nerve mobility. In this test, it's hard to turn the head towards the hand. So you just have to trust that these two steps of this test tells you enough of the story about the nerve mobility issue. Let's repeat the test for the other side. So make the OK sign, turn the arm towards your eye. Can you get here? If so, then move your head away from the arm. If this increases the symptoms or tension, then you have some nerve mobility issues. We also have a second test for ulnaris nerve. First, bring your arms into the prayer position. Next, move the arms to one side. You should get here quite comfortably, but if you cannot, then you might have some nerve issues. And if you turn your head away from the arms, then if this increases the tension or symptoms, again, you have some kind of nerve mobility issue. If you turn the head towards the arms, and this eases the tension, then again, you might have some nerve mobility issues. Surprise, surprise here. Let's repeat this on the other side. Again, can you get here? If you can, 
side bend your head away. If this increases the tension, mobility issues. If you turn your head towards the arms, this eases the tension, nerve mobility issues. Now we are done with the upper body nerve tests. Good job. Now if you found out that you have issues with nerve mobility and you are wondering what you should do about it, I will give you a brief explanation of how to proceed. First, you should mobilize your spine so that the nerves are better able to move. And after that, you should use special exercises, nerve exercises that mobilize the nerves with pain-free movements. And you should also release any tension from the muscles that might keep the nerves hostage. We have made an online course about this topic with all the best exercises and instructions for solving this issue. Go check it out. Next, let's test the lower body nerves. First, we will show you how to test the femoral nerve. And after that comes the El Diablo sciatic nerve. Everybody's favorite, not favorite nerve. The femoral nerve is the long lost relative of the sciatic nerve. Fortunately, we have found it and now we will show it where it goes. So it starts from the lower back in the L2 to 4 segments and then comes to the front of the hip, innervating, innervating the hip and thigh area. This test starts lying comfortably under a palm tree. Let's see how long it remains comfortable for Marcus. But anyway, start following along with the test. Next, put the foot against the wall and keep your knee as flexed as possible. And also remember to extend your hip. Also try to avoid the lower back from extending so it stays relatively neutral the whole time. All right, this can already be a really tight position, but at this point it could also be that, that the hip flexors and quadriceps is limiting the movement. So next let's start to differentiate a bit whether this tightness comes from the nerves or muscles. So really tuck your chin into the chest and if this starts to cause more tension, then it's more likely this is a nerve issue. This might also not be enough for everyone, so let's continue by rounding out the upper back. And now if this increases the tension, then once again it's a nerve issue. And now if extending your head and neck and upper back relieves this tension, then this is also a sign of nerve tissue tightness. Next, let's test the other side. Marcus has somehow magically spun around, but try to follow him. And when you are ready, let's start the test for the other side. So with your knee bent, bring the leg towards the wall. Keep it there, keep extended, low back neutral. And next, let's continue the test by bringing the chin to the chest. If this worsens your tightness, it's a nerve related issue and also you can go further so bend your upper back as well and then let's double check by bringing the neck and upper back all the way into the extension and if this eases the tension then you have nerve issues. And now the moment you have all been waiting for has arrived, so the reveal party and movement test of the sciatic nerve. First we will show you where it goes, so it starts from the L4 to S3 levels of the spine and from there it goes to the buttock and through or under the piriformis muscle, into the hamstrings, into the calf and all the way to the soles of the foot. So it's a long fellow. So we begin this test by sitting down, so grab a chair or something like that and after this follow along with the test. So begin by taking a bad posture, so slump down, but keep looking forwards. After this flex your ankle, so bring the foot towards yourself and start extending from the knee. Now you might start to feel some tightness in the leg and let's double check if this is because of hamstring muscles or nerve tightness by extending from the neck and from the back. If this releases the tension, then it's the sciatic nerve that's causing your issues. After this, 
bring your uh, chin towards your chest, slump really far, and if this is the worst, then nerve mobility issues is the likely cause. Next, let's test for the other side. So again, take a bad posture and then flex the ankle towards yourself or bring the foot towards yourself, sorry. And then extend from the knee. If this is bad, then let's double check what the heck is going on by extending from the upper back and head. If this relieves the tension, then you know what this is. <laughs> let's double check by slumping even further, chin to the chest. If this is the worst, then yes, you guessed right, it's nerve mobility issue. We are finally done with the testings. 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 <laughs> testings. <laughs> really good job for making it this far. And like with the upper body nerves, the same rules apply to fixing the lower body nerve mobility problems. So, first of all, you need to mobilize the spine so that your nerves are better able to move. And you will also need to use special exercises that will mobilize the nerves with pain-free movements. And you will also want to release the tension points from the muscles. Now, if you want to learn how to fix this problem, go check out our online course. It has clear instructional videos. It's quick and easy, just follow along the instructions. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you got some good info out of it. We'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.